Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to talk about a very famous reaction that is Stordinger reduction. Now, again, this video is also divided into two parts. One is the very basic aspect of Stordinger reduction and then there are some advanced concepts um, that might be helpful for either your university examinations or competitive exams. Um, Stordinger reduction does not have a lot of advanced, uh, you can say, concepts but there are some re reactions that are related to Stordinger uh, reduction that you know might be asked in the competitive exams and that is what I have categorized into some advanced concepts for example I have written down over here uh, Blum eta azidine reaction and or azidine synthesis and then there is imine and ketene cycloaddition so this is also called as Stordinger reaction okay so I will be discussing about these things in the advanced concept and one very important um, you can say concept again related to Stordinger reaction is uh, your Stordinger ligation. So uh, what exactly is Stordinger reaction and why it is one of the most useful techniques in the field of biology is also something that we will be discussing in, in this video. In fact, there is a whole um, uh, domain of chemistry that has been developed around uh, ligation. Um, it is called bioorthogonal chemistry and you should not be surprised that in the coming few years, um, if you see a Nobel Prize um, given to Professor uh, Bartosi, who actually coined the term bioorthogonal chemistry. Anyway, um, that was enough of chit chat about the background. Let's talk about Stordinger reduction. So it's a pretty straightforward um, reaction and one of uh, the popular ones wherein a azide is basically reduced into a amine. All right. So what I mean by that, let's let's see um, what the reaction looks like. So if we have a azide, now this azide you can draw in in different form, forms. I personally like to you know uh, for this particular reaction to show the mechanism. I I personally like to draw it in this format. You can draw it in different formats. Okay, there is no restriction as such. Now if in the previous reaction, if you remember, this is the second name reaction. In the first one, we talked about Mitsunobu. So in the Mitsunobu reaction also, we discussed the triphenylphosphine. So over here, here also triphenylphosphine has a very important role. So you add triphenylphosphine to it. So in fact, rather than showing you the transformation, I'll just show you the mechanism. So you add triphenylphosphine. Okay. Now this nitrogen over here, uh, you can say is somewhat uh, electropositive. Okay, it has a delta positive charge. So what is going to happen is this phosphorus over here, this is going to react to, on this nitrogen. Okay, once it does that, these pi electrons will move to this nitrogen because this nitrogen is positively charged. So this will satisfy the charge on this nitrogen. All right. So now what is going to happen? We can uh, in the next step I am writing down below over here. So we have R N. Now to this we have the phosphorus triphenylphosphine basically attached right oh, and then we have nitrogen so I told you these electrons migrate to the nitrogen and then we have double bond n and minus okay <clears throat> now what happens is this is you can see has a negative charge it has a lone pair of electrons as well so it is um, quite eager to form a bond with any other molecule that is somewhat electron deficient so what or it has the capability to form a bond with any molecule or any atom which can accept electrons. So now what is going to happen is that phosphorus either prefers a valency, like either prefers forming three bonds or five. So now over here it, it is having four. So this N minus can attach to this phosphorus. So this is an important step wherein a four membered ring is going to be formed. Now what is going to happen is, so you can show that this attacks onto this phosphorus. So now let us draw that four membered ring. Always remember this, that whenever there's a possibility of elimination of nitrogen, um, that is always a driving force for a reaction. So, or in fact, uh, for example, like there's elimination or there's a possibility of elimination of CO2. These are very stable molecules. So whenever there's a possibility of elimination of such molecules, always look at a possibility that the reaction could be driven in that in that manner. So over here, what is going to happen is you can show that elimination of nitrogen. Basically, this bond over here will break. So these electrons will migrate over here and these electrons can migrate over here. So you can see that if I'm breaking this bond over here, the, so this bond breaks and then and then this bond over here breaks. So over here, you can see there's the elimination of nitrogen. So you can see that in this reaction, we'll have elimination of nitrogen. And when the nitrogen eliminates, we have R, N, double bond, PPH3. 
So there's a double bond formed between the nitrogen and phosphorus. As you can see over here also, phosphorus is forming five bonds. Now what happens? In the next step, you are adding water. Okay, so generally it will be given triphenylphosphine with water. So now uh, in the previous Mitsunobu reaction, we had discussed that your uh, water uh, or your oxygen has uh, again a very strong affinity towards phosphorus. So the same thing is going to happen. The water molecule is going to attack this phosphorus. So um, you can show it like this. Okay, I'm skipping some steps over here just to show what happens. So once this oxygen attacks this phosphorus, these electrons migrate to nitrogen. Okay, so nitrogen will have negative charge. And when the oxygen bonds to the phosphorus, this is something that you should visualize, right? So uh, because um, it is not uh, possible always to write down all these steps. There are some it's trivial steps that you should be able to visualize. So you have to visualize that this lone pair is attacking the phosphorus um, or the oxygen is attacking the phosphorus. Um, so the oxygen will have three bonds. So there will be a positive charge on this oxygen and this N will have a negative charge. So this N, what it can do, it can abstract the hydrogen over here, right? So I'm going to show that. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'm quickly going to show that, that over here we have NH and then this is attached like this. Okay, now again, what I can do is either I can show this nitrogen lone pair attacks this hydrogen. Okay, and it forms O minus and the O minus migrates back. So I can see this nitrogen has lone pair. This nitrogen lone pair can attack the hydrogen or remove the hydrogen. Either I can show it this way or I can show this lone pair on the oxygen migrates over here. Again, oxygen will have the positive charge and then this nitrogen can abstract this hydrogen. So whatever way you wish to um, denote it as, so this lone pair of oxygen migrates over here and you can remove this hydrogen over here, right? And then this bond basically breaks, the nitrogen phosphorus bond breaks. So now what do you have as a byproduct? You have triphenylphosphine oxide, similar to the one that we had in your Mitsunobu reaction. So we have triphenylphosphine oxide removed and then this bond, this bond migrates, okay? So we have R, NH minus and then whatever hydrogen we removed from here that you can attach over here. So what we have got finally is that we started off from the azide and now we have finally come to the amine. So this is your Staudinger reduction from the azide you get the amine. Let me quickly walk you through some of the reactions before we go on to chemical ligation. Over here you can see there's an azide you add triphenylphosphine and water and after a while you end up with the amine. So this is a simple and a straightforward reaction. Generally in the examination, you will find that Staudinger reduction would not come as a single reaction. It will be coupled with some other reaction in order to make it a bit complex, particularly for competitor exams like CSIR, which are postgraduate level examinations, maybe not at the undergraduate level. So this is a, this is a very good, a typical example of that. So over here, you can see there is an azide. Uh, you're adding a different form of your uh, phosphine and uh, over here now what you observe is that the reduction of this azide will take place and it will form the nh2 sometimes water might, might be given sometimes you know uh, it won't be so you just need to be careful about that it does not create much of a difference Some, if it's not mentioned generally you're doing the workup and it is going to form like it is going to form the amine now once the amine is formed over here you have an isocyanate so in this what happens that both these nitrogens this nitrogen over here this amine and this primary amine both of them coupled with this carbon over here oxygen is basically removed and you end up getting this sort of a five membered heterocyclic compound right so th that's what i mentioned that Staudinger reduction would not be asked as a single reaction most probably in uh, competitive examinations particularly at the postgraduate level now this is the example of the blum eta synthesis uh, this i have just taken as a representative example if you want to learn more about it you can google things or maybe you can go through some uh, name reaction books in order to understand the reaction so this is basically from an epoxide how do you end up forming an isridine so this is the typical example of the blum eta uh, isridine synthesis and this is the staudinger cycloaddition reaction wherein i told you that a ketene reacts with an imine Okay, so over here X is basically nitrogen, so th that will be an imine. So both of them uh, give a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition to give these four membered rings. And these are particularly useful because uh, it has applications in forming beta lactams. Okay, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are aware of that, but beta lactams are very potent antibiotics. So if you want to form beta lactam derivatives, then this is one very useful reaction. Now, why is it a very, very important reaction? That is where I will bring to you ligation. 
ओके सो लेट मी नाउ टेल यू अबाउट दिस केमिकल लाइगेशन और स्टॉर्टिंग लाइगेशन सो बिफोर आई टॉक अबाउट स्टॉर्टिंग लाइगेशन देर इज वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट which i spoke about at the starting of the video which is bio orthogonal chemistry so what exactly is bio orthogonal chemistry it's basically a very quick and a very selective reaction between two substrates which does not interfere with biological reactions or biological molecules what i mean by that is finding such substrates which first of all are very selective towards one another so like we talk about chemo selective reactions in chemistry wherein you know certain reagents chemo selective reductions or chemo selective oxidations wherein certain reagents only target a particular functional group similarly in in the field of biology as well we need certain um you can say um functional groups which quickly react with one another and do not interfere with the biological process basically they do not react with biological molecules okay now the problem is that finding such selective molecules or selective functional groups which are not present in the biological system is difficult but azide for example they are not present in the biological um system in our system they are not present and why is there a need for such um quick reactions or why is there a need for bio orthogonal chemistry so you have to understand that sometimes we need to see the process of how a biological um you can say substrate is behaving so let's say we want to see that if we have uh, you know um induced a drug into a per person we want to see where the drug is going in which tissue is going how it is reacting with the biological molecules so it's like for example we need to do something which is called as live cell labeling okay it's called live cell labeling so basically live cells we want to see that what is happening to them when we let's say give some, give them some drug molecule now the problem is that if we use a substrate or a functional group which can react with a uh, different you know uh, membranes or different systems that are present in our system basically right then what is going to happen is that we will not really truly know that what is what is its role because there will be lot of interference but if we can find such substrates which do not really interfere which are not present in the biological system then we can explore that how these cells are going to react i'll tell you how bio orthogonal chemistry or how, how this reaction starting a ligation uh, gives us a lot of options on how we can study these cells or any other phenomena in the biological system if you just hope i hope that you remember the mechanism now let's talk about starting a ligation so what happens is it was found that if you have a molecule like this okay and let's say you have an ester at this system so let's say you have an ester at this position and now you have let's say the phosphine molecule over here now what you can do is now if we have an azide okay so i'll just write down azide over here like this um for the, for the time being even though it's not correct but let me just for the aesthetic purposes mention it like this <clears throat> okay so what happens is that this phosphorus we know will attack this nitrogen okay and we have a positive charge over here and then a negative over here okay you know the process what is going to happen but let me just quickly show it to you show the mechanism again so this attacks over here these electrons migrate this double bond is there this these electrons will migrate over here and then this n minus will attack the phosphory phosphorus we will get a four membered ring and then nitrogen will be removed so ultimately what we are going to get and this this we can represent as r this is what we get if you remember right so 2 2 4 plus 1 five bonds are there for phosphorus and this is the sort of like imine that we get now what is going to happen is that in such systems before the water molecule can react this nitrogen attacks this carbon because this carbon if you remember this is an ester this is electrophilic in nature this will form o minus okay and then this o minus will migrate back and once this o minus migrates back this o amine group is kicked off this oam group over here is kicked off so this nitrogen lone pair attacks the ester the carbonyl carbon of the ester o, o minus is formed o minus migrates back and then this um oam group is removed all right and because of that what happens is get this um ring system now you can write a double bond over here also if you want like this okay uh but then nitrogen over here will have four bonds and it will be a positive charge so basically this i'm just removing this electrons i'm giving it back to the nitrogen these electrons okay i'm giving it back to the nitrogen so phosphor there will be a positive charge on the phosphorus and now what you are going to do just bear with me because you are going to understand the utility of this reaction or why ligation is are so important so now once this is formed now if you add the water molecule over here 
so th- when you, when you add the water molecule this bond will break and you know what we are going to get i'm going to draw over here okay amide basically you can see this is an amide that we get and over here we will have pph2 double bond o okay now let's talk about the utility why i just drew this whole thing let's understand the utility for example this pph2 is also biologically not interfering with it was found that it does not interfere with any reactions and azide as i told you is a very small functional group and it is very stable in the biological system it is metabolically stable also and it does not interfere it's a small molecule it does not interfere so both of these groups over here do not interfere in the biological system so they are definitely uh, you know a promising candidates for use for usage in bioorthogonal chemistry another important feature is because starting due to the starting a reduction actually uh, scientists found out that phosphorus and nitride they are quite selective towards one another okay like if they are present in a biological system they will quickly react they will first of all, like i said it should be quick the reaction should be very fast so these two react together very very quickly azide and you know your phosphine and uh, like your tri triaryl phosphine and apart from that it was also found that uh you if you have heard about click chemistry that alkynes and azides okay they also react in presence of copper uh that is again one of the systems that can be used in bioorthogonal chemistry but you cannot use copper because copper is toxic to biological systems so what scientists did was they started using a uh, highly uh, strained alkynes so for example if you talk about cyclooctane okay cyclooctane molecule so this is a highly strained alkyne so if you react this cyclooctane with an azide then you don't need copper for the click reaction to take place if you do not un- know about click reaction you can just search it's a very simple straightforward reaction that was developed by barry sharpless click chemistry okay you can just click like click of a finger so you can just search about click chemistry and you'll get to know so for click chemistry in general you need copper for most of the reactions but over here that cop the presence of copper is not required if you have strained alkynes so this can also be used by for bioorthogonal chemistry because the azide and alkynes are very selective and they react very quickly and plus the alkynes are not uh, you can say they do not re- really interfere with the biological systems so this is what is your stordinger ligation that if you have such systems then they react quickly together they do not interfere with the biological systems but the question is then what is the utility the utility is for example um you attach okay so now like i've just shown you this system so let's say this system is attached somehow to a cell okay there are some really you can say there is some other functional group also which through which we can attach this whole system to a cell okay and it is injected in the body or let's say we are trying to study it in vivo in vivo means in mouse or you know some other um animal or we are trying to study it in vitro in vitro means we are culturing the cells outside the body and then we are going to test that what is going to happen what is the fate uh, of this cell let's say now what we are going to do is let's say this r group over here to which we have attached the azide this r group has some l- labeling done labeling done means there is some compound which is acting as a label label means it could be a fluorescent compound okay basically we can detect what is happening to this compound uh through through different through different ways right either it could be a fluorescent compound or it could be a dye or something of that sort it could be radio labeled okay right now you might have also heard about radio chemistry so there are a lot of things that you can do with this r group so th- you know that phosphorus is not going to interfere with any um biological systems so you are quite sure that this whatever this cell is going to do it, it this group will not is not going to interfere with its function right but you also want to know that what the cell is going to do in the body so now what you do is you add this azide which which is attached to this uh, labeled uh, molecule and as soon as they you know they um, sort of like uh, come in contact with one another they will quickly react they will selectively react so you are very sure that this azide molecule is not going to react with any other biological system it is only going to react with this particular cell to which we have this phosphine group attached right so that is one a, a very good advantage and then this all this first so it is biologically um you can say unnoticed it will not react biologically it is unreactive because 
like i mentioned earlier also azide and phosphines are such are, are molecules which are not present in the biological system and apart from that the second thing second advantage is that this is selective so it is not going to react anywhere else it is only going to go and react with this phosphorus so you can be sure that once this whole system so this is called live cell labeling so this cell currently is unlabeled but when you attach it to this um, when the phosphorus and azide react together and undergo stordinger ligation or you can say functionalization and then this r group is is basically what it's labeled you can see what 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 is happening to this r group so when this r group gets attached to the cell you can actually see what is the fate of this cell that what is the function where it is going in the body how it is reacting everything can be detected thanks to the reaction between the azide and phosphorus and thanks to this labeled compound so that is what is the advantage of stordinger ligation you can read more about bioorthogonal chemistry it's very very interesting i am not the best person uh, in the sense that i mean it's very interesting but i'm not the best person who can give you much detail about it because it's not a new topic to, for me but yeah of course i have not gone in depth of biological chemistry uh, i know it from you know from my uh, general you can say interest in sciences so maybe if if you find this um, whole idea very interesting you can definitely think about you know this is just one example click reaction and then reaction between um, phosphor phosphine and um, azide you can uh, find many more examples and in fact if you find this um, topic interesting maybe you can come up with your own uh, methods of uh, finding these groups which can quickly react together um, and you know be useful in the field of bioorthogonal chemistry so anyway i hope you found this video helpful um, if you did please do not forget to give this video a big thumbs up and uh, share it with your friends if you want if you want them to know about bioorthogonal chemistry and uh, at last um it takes a lot of effort to make this video so it will um make my day if you also end up subscribing to the channel that will be quite helpful thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next name reaction series or next name reaction episode very very soon thank you hey guys so i am a verified educator on an academy and along with that i am also available on the an academy plus platform where i am taking live classes along with other educators so in case you are interested in attending the live classes you can subscribe to the an academy plus platform using my referral code that is sethi sethi and that will give you 10% discount all right and in case you are not interested in attending the live classes you can watch the free courses that are available on the an academy for that all you need to do is go to the an academy website or download the an academy learning app and search my name over there that is a sethi once you do that you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the an academy platform all right